Elder Iring in particular and Elder Cook as well. Um, I understand that as a Harvard Business School graduate, uh, you are in a unique position um, in many ways in terms of how the secular world looks on this appointment. We've also seen a couple of Harvard graduates appointed to leadership positions at Rick's, the former Rick's College, BYU-Idaho, and at BYU-Hawaii. Uh, is the church making some statement about its tend to pursue Harvard MBAs here? Um, I wanted to know how you see your particular professional background helping you in your calling, as well as how Elder Cook sees his role as an attorney helping him in his well, I'll let him defend the law. I'll defend the Harvard <laughs> Business School. Uh, actually, uh, the best way to do it is, is to tell you the story. By the way, the president of, in Hawaii, Steve Wheelwright, who was a professor at Harvard, was my PhD candidate when I was a professor at Stanford. I was his thesis chairman. Uh, and so it is a tight web, uh, you know, in terms of people that we know. Although the Lord did that, I had nothing to do with that. But I would just say this, the way to look at Harvard and its effect, at least personally, is with this story. When I first came as the president of Ricks College, I attended my first meeting that I'd ever been in watching the general authorities of the church, the first presidency and others, running a meeting. I had been studying for the 10 years I was a professor at Stanford how you make decisions in meetings, in groups. So I got a chance, here's my chance to see the way the Lord's servants do it, of which I now am one. But my first, I, I looked at it with my Harvard, Stanford eyes, and I thought, this is the strangest conversation I've, I mean, here are the prophets of God, and they're disagreeing in an openness that I had never seen in business. In business, you're, you're careful when you're with the bosses, you know. Here they were just, and I, I watched this process of them disagreeing, and I thought, good heavens. You know, I thought it, 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 revelation would come to them all, and, uh, and they'd all see things the same way in some sort of, you know, and it was more open than anything I had ever seen in all the groups I'd ever studied in business. I was just dumbfounded. But then after a while, the conversation cycled around, and they began to agree. And I saw the most incredible thing, that here are these very strong, very bright people all with different opinions, suddenly the opinions began to just line up and I thought, I've seen a miracle. I've seen unity come out of this wonderful open kind of exchange that I'd never seen in all my studies of government or business or anywhere else. And so I thought, oh, what a miracle. And then it was President Harold B. Lee was chairing the meeting. Uh, I think, he, anyway, it was, a, it was a Board of Education meeting. And uh, I thought, now he's going to announce the decision because I've seen this miracle. And he said, wait a minute, I think, I think we'll bring this matter up again some other time. I sense there is someone in the room who is not yet settled. And they went on to the next item, and I thought, that is strange. And then I watched somebody, one of the brethren, one of the, I think one of the 12, walk past President Lee and say, thank you. <laughs> There's something I didn't have a chance to say. So I want you to know, the main thing you do about Harvard and Stanford, and I love that, I hope this doesn't offend my wonderful friends, forget it. Uh, we're in another kind of thing here. Uh, uh, this is what it claims to be. This is the true church of Jesus Christ. Revelation is real, even in what you call the business kinds of settings. And uh, a great man whom I love and will always love, President Harold B. Lee, uh, taught me a great lesson that says, no, uh, we can be open, we can be direct, we can, we can talk about differences in a way that you can't anywhere else because we're all just looking for the truth. We're not trying to win. We're not trying to make our argument dominate. We just want to find what's right. And then a man sensitive enough to sense, without anybody saying anything, that somebody in the room was not settled. <laughs> and uh, again, there's a, there's, a kind of, uh, there's a kind of process of openness and yet coming together and having confidence that you know what the Lord wants, not what we want, that is, uh, I loved Harvard, I loved Stanford, 
had a great time there. My wife is here. We spent the first 10 years of our married life. I was a professor at Stanford, thought I'd stay there forever, and had tenure, and how happy we were, and then went to Rexburg, Idaho from there, uh, and uh, then came down here and found out that there was a kind of uh, making decisions and working together in groups that I have never seen anywhere else in the world except here.